Our students, Brian Proctor, the art teacher, back in the classroom with another lesson. Now, I have to warn you, this is a serious lesson. So if you are into just some pretty pictures, you just want to see some quick drawings, you are in the wrong class. But if you are here to learn something, to improve on your skills, your talents, have a seat because class is about to begin. All right, so this one is going to be about drawing action, not just action pose position. This is about the action line, which makes everything more action-y. Action-y, is that a word? So anyway, let's get your pencils out and your papers out and your caps on and let's do this lesson. Let's go. All right, we're going to talk about action or more uh, to the point, action lines. So what is action? Basically, action is movement. If you stand there and you stand at attention, that's not action. But if you take your first step, then you're taking an action. Not a powerful action, but it's still an action. So if I say this, this line, this straight line, that's not action. That's not an action line. But if I curve it, then we're starting to do some action. That's more of an action line. If I do this, that's even more of an action line. And if I do this, that's even more. And the same thing applies to comics. When you're drawing your person, your character, characters, you need to have that action line because comics is about storytelling. And you don't want a boring story. Nobody will read it or they will come, won't come back for the next issue. You want, basically, you want action, action, just like a movie. You pay seven, eight dollars to go see an action movie and all you see is people standing around, you're like, man, that was a boring movie. So we're going to get into this action lines in your comic or in your character. So, as I said, if you take a character and you stand that character up, and it's going to be rough lines because this is just quick drawing. There's no action. Draw a little better, Brian. There's no action here because the character is just standing there. Now, if you take that same character and you And you notice how I do the torso, the body, and it's the same way. This is very just a quick line. Quick line, quick way to do a, and a body, a torso. My brain is thinking about my next sentence. And you bend that, then you get a little more action. But let's just say you do this. And even though these lines are still straight, you can get action from it. you get more action. So when you start bending your lines, even though, as I said, this line is straight, when you start bending your line, somehow you start to get that action or you get more action. But the first thing you have to do is the torso. And for years, people thought the head was so important. And it is important because your head and your face shows expression of your character and you always want to see the expression of your character but doing the body the torso is number one so once you master the torso then you can start to do better action lines so let's do a quick torso thing so you know the torso is round oval that's that's easy see a lot of people still say oh i can't do a torso or i can't do that oval but if you do this you just did two ovals, same way uh, with a lot of other shapes. If you can write L, then you can draw, let's just say, 
an E. I was going to do something with that, but I don't know what. <laughs> so if you take an E and you put the letters up like this, sideways, bring it down, over, 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 straight up and down, follow this line, you have a box. So for those people that keep saying, I can't draw, if you can write, you can draw. But if you keep saying to yourself, I can't do it, then don't try. Don't even try because you're shooting yourself in the foot before the race gets started. And I didn't make this video to fuss at people, but I'm just saying how easy it is to draw if you stop looking at the detail of something and look at the shape of it. So back to the torso. Oval. You already know how to do oval because you can do a letter O or, the, the, or zero. The torso, you want to get your center line. And you want to have this mountain upside down you. From here, from these two points, you want to go straight up. If this torso is facing you, if the torso is straight forward facing you, come up here. You're doing basically this is the letter T or cross like that. That's your torso. These are your guidelines to your torso. When I was young, nobody was there to show me how to draw, so I did a lot of tracing, a lot of tracing, and I tried to connect the lines, and I realized that drawing is just a puzzle. It's just a puzzle that you put the pieces together to make one big picture. You just have to learn where the pieces that connect are so that you can make that one big picture. So I use a lot of guidelines, and I said, oh, there are things that connect on this on this um, body. And uh, I just drew and drew and drew until I figured it out and traced and traced and traced and looked at stuff and drew from line to line to line to line. So it's this you, once you get your torso mastered, then the rest becomes easy because your legs and your arms are just uh, cylinders. So with this, just above this is the chest. At this point here, it turns up and it goes into your delts, which are right here. This little piece left, this V right here, bring that V up, and that's your neck. Your head is up in here somewhere. Now, from this V, if you, if you do a line like this, and you go down, making a triangle, the nipples are on that line, and also the, um, the, those rib cages that people like to draw are on that same line. Everything connects. You just have to look at it and then see how these things actually connect. And there's no guesswork. So what's left over, you just add your shoulders with this little leftover piece. As I say, your, your neck comes into a V, your, your shoulder, your collarbone, it dips down like this. It goes into your, your delts. That your delts form your chest because your chest comes up and down into this, which is one piece. Just said, which is what I talked about in my last video. It's basically just one piece here, just like the football uh, shoulder pads. And that comes up, starting your center line. You have your rib cage here, which curves around. As I said, if you take um, draw that invisible line, the nipples are here. The ribs fall on that line here. Same thing on the other side, and then it's simple. And then you have your your abs come down there. So once you master this torso, then the rest is easy. And as I said, these part these lines here play an important part. My throat is dry because it's early morning. Because when you start to turn the torso, and this was not meant to be a torso video. When you start to turn the torso, this right here is going to come up and usually if you're having a hard time, make a uh, triangle, make it more of a point. But at this point where this hits this circle, you're going to curve this up and it's going to have the same amount of curve as here. And then you just follow the same thing. The shoulders are up here at this point where this hits this circle, where that hits that circle. This is your shoulder. Or your, your delt part of your arm your chest is just above this little point here at this line it curves up into the arm like that you got this your V is still going to be right here 
your neck or your neck to make your neck a little longer. This is going to curve around and your neck can be here. Your head is going to be up in here somewhere. Your stomach, of course, as I said. And your other part of your chest comes up and into that. And then again, that line, that nipple is going to be here. And those ribs are going to be here. And then you come down with your, your um, side. So once you master this torso, then it becomes easy. Just knowing that this torso is round, it's round. So whenever you draw your torso, however you're going to do it, it's got to be round. I just did that. I'm just bringing this line down more. It's got to be round. Now this, your collarbone, if you're facing me forward, your collarbone is going to be pretty much straight across. If you're bending down, the more you bend down, the more this is going to turn into the letter Y. The letter Y. So, if this one, and you have to have this, you have to have this quick understanding of the torso before you go any further. So, if I'm bending down, this is my center line, bending down, here's that Y. I bend down some more, let's just use this one. Here's that Y here, which turns the shoulders into more of a diamond shape. So if you're looking straight down at this guy and he's looking up at you, it's gonna look like this. You have your neck, your shoulders, your chest, and as I say, keep that one piece. that and the arms are going to be down here if he's got his arms down and then you might see some of the stomach maybe some of the leg and then the feet and this is also used for flying positions if he's flying straight out now but knowing the torso let's get into this Action is when you start to bend the torso or, or twist the torso. Now, I've already showed you that. You have this here. Now, this is one solid piece because these are your, these are your, your, your ribs. <clears throat> and your ribs are shaped kind of like this. Don't quote me on this. Like that. And then it comes around like that. This this is solid. So this is not going to move. And then you have that hole up here. And then for the sake of um, drawing, let's just say you're going to have a hole here and a hole here. But that's solid. That's not going to twist. The only part that's going to twist is this part right here. This little, as I call it, the tuna can. This is the only part that's going to be able to twist and bend. Because below that, you have your uh, the pelvic bone. You have your your What is that? The spine, the, the spinal column. And then you have your little pelvic bone somewhere in here, not somewhere in here, down in here, like that. And that's basically, that's bone too. So that's not going to move. It will turn, it'll rotate just like this one, but it's not going to bend or flex like this part right here. So this is the part we're going to be concerned about. And of course, this is not a, um, I'm going to draw a pretty picture video because several people have asked me to draw pictures. I think one asked me last night to do a Spider-Man because of the, the new Spider-Man movie, The Far From Home. But I don't do drawings. I don't just sit here and draw characters because it's not about me. It's not about me showing off my skill. It's about me helping you to develop your skill because you can watch me draw Spider-Man and Batman and Superman all day. And at the end of the day, when you go to bed, what have you learned? Nothing that this guy can draw, and a few days later, you would have forgotten all about me. But if I teach you how to draw Spider-Man, Batman, and Superman, at the end of the day, you'll go to bed knowing that your skills are greater than they were before, and then you will have that to take with you for the rest of your life. So me drawing Spider-Man and Superman and all that, as I say, it's doing nothing for you, just showing off uh, my skills and there are a lot of channels that will do that and that's fine if you want to be entertained but my channel is to educate for those people who said you know what I can draw 
I can write, I can do whatever, and I want to go out and make some money doing this. I don't want to work at some desk or, or, or shoveling something or delivering something. I want to use my skills where I can sit at home in my place making good money doing art. All right, so what was I going to do? All right, so let's say, action, this is your torso. You want to, it's going to be curved. This part right here, this is your action line, like an S, like that. This is the part here that is going to actually move, bend or twist. Now, unlike Spider-Man, the, the body can only twist so much. So if you take this, you're doing like a, a shallow S and your upside down house. This is going to be always where this line falls. That's always going to be the point or the roof of that house. And then you already know the torso. The point of that mountain, let's just call it a mountain for now, is going to be right there. Your chest, okay, so wherever this point is here, you're going to have that curve again. Your chest is going to be here, and it's going to curve up at this point. This is going to be your collarbone, unless it comes down. And it's going to turn into a, like a shallow Y. So you've already got it. You already got the main part down like that. So this is twisted. So you, you, and of course, you know your legs are going to go right here. Now, you're not going to have your legs straight down again because that's not really action. You spread your legs, however, according to however the picture is or the story or the scene calls for. Then you can do your arm. However, you can do this arm. However, and then you can do the head up here. However, so by just twisting this off of the torso, you now have your dramatic action pose. And it's very simple once you learn what you're doing. So again, it could go from here. It could be on this side. It could even be centered. But if it's centered, you want to drop the um, drop the collarbone down so he's bending over more. Because standing straight up is not really action. But if you took this guy and you dropped him down more, this is the collarbone. And the more you drop the collarbone, remember the, the more, because this is a circle, the oval, it's like an egg center line and I take that egg and I'll do another one because it's, I'm trying to explain it. Teaching is easy. The presentation of teaching is the hard part. If I take this, say this is an egg and it's round right here. The more I drop this, it's going to be down here. So if I have a second line here, that second line is going to drop down here as well. So if this is the chest, this is the chest. If I bring this down, the chest has to come down around, come down more, which shortens the whole torso part. And then the head would have to drop down to into the shoulders. You know, the shoulders will go behind the back of the head like that. So that gives you your more action. Like so. All right. Now, again, let me stop and reset this camera because for after so after so long, it'll blur on me. I don't know why. I'm gonna have to invest in a really really good camera. And this is a phone. This is a Samsung phone, Galaxy. It's like the J9 or something like that. It's not the top of the line phone, and you see the difference between. Uh, now and a second ago. Okay, so what was I saying? What was I saying? I don't remember. I have to rewind it and look at it. But anyway, if if it's going down, 
and it's going down, your chest has to be the same way. You do this, remember that curved line here, and then you're going to either, either you, you can use a tuna can or hockey puck. A lot of people don't eat tuna. You do the hockey puck, but that's where your twist goes down here it comes here it's going to stay straight on this circle no matter how you turn that it's going to stay straight it's like an egg you take an egg out of the refrigerator boil it and then put a line on it you cannot bend that line on that egg it's going to stay straight but once it comes off of that and on that second piece then it'll twist but it'll only twist so much unless you're a chinese acrobat it's only going to twist so much or you have spider powers the same thing about this. This is a solid piece too. This house is a solid piece. It's not going to twist. It will only rotate. So if you are rotating this and it's not straightforward, it's going to be more like this. I show you the point, but you, you always have to have this little room, as I say, for the man junk. And if you turn it up, let's just say you turn it up. And this is where you're going to have to know your shapes, manipulate your shapes. It's going to be like that. You have to have room for the legs to come out. Same way for the torso. If you do the torso, you have to have room for your arms to come out. And of course, your head like that. So let's continue this. Since I've got that, you twist this, and then, as I said, wherever this point drops at, that's going to be the center of your house. The center, yeah, the center roof of your house. And then later on, you round that off. You don't want it to be a point. You round it off, and then you figure out, as I said, whatever the scene calls for, where your how your arms and your legs are going to be placed, whether they're straight up and down, or they're curved, or they're bent. But basically, it's just kind of an S. You're doing kind of an S. And this S has to stay with the shape of that. And this has to stay with the shape of that. This is the only part that, that moves. So you have to connect these. And this is like Reed Richards right here because he's twisted so much. Or this could be your Spider-Man. But if you bend it, and you put this part up here. And as I said, you have to, you have to manipulate your shapes or know your shapes. Your leg, your leg comes out here. It's bent. Because as a, again, these two, these two pieces will not move. These two pieces will not bend. And then you have this. So this part here is the only part that bent to bring this part up. And this would be your buttocks here. And this would be the crotch area here. And then you're talking about your Spider-Man motions because your legs are coming up. Because you bent that that mid mid section. And there's your Spider Man far from home. Way far from home. So as I said, you're going to have to be able to take these shapes and manipulate them. And that's the one thing I keep harping on. Do your shapes over and over and over and over and over again, because that's all the body is, are just shapes, shapes. Turn these shapes this way and that way so you can figure out how they go. Just shapes, shapes. I cannot beat down, beat you down enough about this. This is what you need to do. Uh, so in this one, cause somebody's like, how did you do that? You just took the torso here. Here's your line. Here's your center line. And then I took this part, which is the house. 
and then that would be the center line here and then you just connect that part in the center this and you can think of that as gum or jello or something that molds or bends because it will bend it will scrunch up it will scrunch up and then you have your lines like your stomach lines there and then you have this part here so if I had the center line coming down stomach 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 that center line would be right here and then you would see this other part of the leg this hole for the leg you might not see this hole for the, that hole for the leg but you will see this one here so some weird weird position for the leg again hold here hold there and then the, for the other arm here and then your head of course you have this would come in that's the small of your back right here like that that's a crazy position I don't know why I keep pushing my paper out of focus all right let's do some a little more better detailed stuff so let's say let's just do this and this might be the screenshot you have that torso no let's take them the other way this this is gonna be He's going to be twisted again. So like I said, you have that small S here. The hockey puck or the tuna can. The upside down house. And then you have that twist. So that's just a small S. Now, when you turn your character left or right, you're going to have to adjust his shoulders. The shoulders can't be straight. It can be, but it's going to look awkward. But to give it more action, you want to do that. You want to twist that, that um, shoulder. If he's going the other way, you twist it down that way. But let me continue to draw. So let's just say you get this, you have that, shoulder blade, and the, the leg. And this is the hard part. It's like, okay, so what are you going to do with the arms and what are you going to do with the legs? If I'm not drawing specifically or for some scene that I have in my head, then it's hard for me to actually draw action. I have to see somebody falling off a building or somebody fighting a tiger. And then I'll say, oh, okay, there you are. This is how you do this. And let's just say this guy is about to fight somebody. Going off camera? No, good. He's got his hand up, he's got the block, he's got the fist here. Or maybe he's doing the karate thing. So he's got the little knife hand ready to strike. Like that and you can put like one foot down because balance you have to have that what is it it was it was 70 70 percent on the back leg 30 percent the old martial arts days it's been it's been a while like so and that gives you that little twist as I say you dip that uh, shoulder down the V for the neck. The head is going to be turned this way. He's looking up. He's looking at his opponent. The chest here. We got that curve here. It's going to curve into that arm. Same thing here. The shoulder. <clears throat> shoulder. Now, I could have rounded the shoulder a little bit to bring his head down, but I didn't. So let's just give it a little curve to it. 
The head's still going to be up because he's he's um, he's seeing his opponent. So the head's not going to be down. He's not rushing. This and then, of course, as I said, the, the stomach doesn't come straight down. It comes in. But you have to follow that curved line. And that's the thing that a lot of people miss. So you have this curved line here. You have your, your mountain here, which ends right here because this is your torso or this is these are your your rib your rib cage so the way this line goes it has to come it has to follow it too but it's going to come in and follow it and then you have your first ab here second ab following that curve this is a curve don't bring your abs straight across this whole piece is a curve. Remember the hockey puck or the tuna can? It's a curve. So the same thing. If this is your ab, your abs is going to curve around just like that. Don't follow that curve. And then that goes right up to the neck. And then you turn your head accordingly. So if I did another one, let's just say get this out and it should be harder paper if I'm going to keep this for my thumbnail let's say we got the guy here and always start with the torso because the torso is your main thing you're going to go back like this I'm going to come down here's your hockey puck or your tuna can I don't know why I started calling it a hockey puck and then keep down into the house so this guy's leaning back with a little twist. Let's just say we got a here and here, shoulder here and right here. That, and then as I say, it comes around following that twist. Now the legs, let's just say this guy is blocking, he is, Holding, putting a force field up of some type. As I said, it's gonna. Hey, I have to. I have to see it in my head before I go further. Cause I, I'll pause and I'm, I'm like, what? What am I doing? What am I doing? And then let's just say the hands. And this is just like rough sketches because, I, as I say, I have to ask myself, what in the world am I doing? So this guy created some kind of force field, force shield, force field. And then you have that because he's going back and I should have put him back a little bit more, but I didn't figure out what I was doing until now. And then you have this one leg here that he's bracing himself on. And this other leg here which goes back, way back. And you will see that a lot of positions are very similar because there's not too much that the body can do that's different. You might be able to do a different angle on something, but it's the same thing over and over again. You real, Realistically, it's the same positions maybe turn to the side. And that's why I did work. I'm working on a 360 book. It's, it's taking your position and it's rotating it. It's showing you how to do it rotated so you don't get stagnant by doing the same position over and over and over again. So as I said, this guy could be Wielding a little force field, so this shoulder would have to be up a little bit to be to be honest. This part of the arm would have to be up. And it could be like a force blast hitting it. And he's wielding that. He's doing that, um, what was that, Doctor Strange kind of thing, holding, creating the shield. So 
So yeah, with a little bit of a twist, and of course with the legs are not stagnant or not uh, straight, you have that action. Like so. All right, and the last one for all you guys who are still working on that stagnant straight up and down pose don't in the beginning don't what am i saying don't focus on detail if you have a character that is going to wear clothes like the guy could be a uh, military and he's got the military gear on or he could be a detective or something like that then all you need is this right here this is all you need. You don't need any muscle. You don't need any really good definition unless the person has tight, tight clothes on, like a t-shirt. But still, you won't really need abs because you don't see real, really see abs through a t-shirt. Unless that t-shirt is crazy tight. So all you need is your shape. Basically, you, you have your your lats, your roundness of your legs, and then you really don't need that, as I say, because it depends on what the guy is wearing. Let's just say, uh, I'm trying to figure out some military camo kind of stuff. So, however the vest is. So... been a while since I drew like a military thing and I'm working on a new series where it has does have military stuff to it so I need to know how to do the military stuff And I'm not going to do this whole picture. I'm just showing you what I'm saying. All the muscles are now covered up because I'm doing clothes. So you really don't need to know how to do muscles. It is good, yes, to know what you're doing. But don't stress it. When you're doing your rough like this, all you need to do is the block figure like that. Unless, as I say, unless he's got like um, his short sleeves, then you want to get that arm muscular enough to show that this guy's powerful. But if he's got like long sleeves on, maybe like a wristband or something, then you don't have to do it. Shirt, what does his shirt look like? Dog tags. The only thing you have to worry about is more your expression on your face and doing the face. That's about it. But you clothes wise, once you get all your wrinkles and stuff in, that, that would be your biggest thing. How do I put my wrinkles in? So, yeah, you don't have to worry too much about that. If he's got some detective like, what was that guy? DC got the long trench coat on. You don't you don't really have to worry about that. And back to what I was saying about you guys who are doing your straight on stagnant pictures. Am I still in camera? Okay, so let's just do this. And this is shorthand for me. When I'm really trying to draw rough, I'll do this little thing like that. It's just flat. It's kind of like the letter A. It's like if you do the letter A. As I say, look at the shape of something. And then I'll do that. And then I'll come back. And then I will add, subtract, take away, put to, divide. And then that's just quick. Especially if I'm doing a lot of people on a page and they're running. I'll do something like this. 
or the guy's uh, balling or whatever, explosion hit. And then, I, as I said, I'll put the torso in and I'll put the little tuna can and then the uh, house and then I'll work on the legs. But if I'm just doing rough gestures, and this is something you should be doing all the time, just little rough gestures like this to see how it goes or to, to just better yourself, to be loose, to be looser. So, okay, here we go. Let's get back to this because I keep, keep getting, keep getting distracted. So we have this, a lot of people are, are the few people send me their drawings and they're working, they're still working on the front position. Try twisting it just a little bit, just twist that a little bit to the side. Keep that point here. Just twist your character a little bit. Like I said, drop your shoulders. Um, there's your torso. This your, your tuna can, this. And then spread the legs just a little bit more. Now, most times when you do something from the side, you're gonna to want to put the feet on um, the old perspective grid where they connect somewhere way off here, but it's not necessary. But if you're, it's, it's good to do, but not necessarily, especially if you're at the beginning stage, twist it a little bit, do something with the arm instead of having the arm straight down. We have it come, come down. And as I said, this is a standard, you look in any comic book and they have the hand cocked back behind their side. The other one here, maybe have it up or down. I would say it depends on, on, on the scene, but you're just drawing. Let's bring it down a little bit more. And then maybe the fist is right here. And that's just foreshortening. Again, like that, and then maybe bring the leg out. It's still good for your character, leaving space here. But it's not just so straight up and down like you've been doing. And the one bad thing about the red pencil is it, it loses its point quick. Always keep a point on your pencil. And then your neck, of course, you have that little leftover piece, your V for that, your neck and your head always, your chin always comes down in your neck. Sometimes I'll have it touch the collar, but it's more of a looking up position. And you can always make shoulders bigger. That's not a big thing. And of course, you know about the chest. I already told you about the chest and the torso. Like that. Just start twisting your character a little bit more. It doesn't have to be a lot. Just a little bit versus to Avengers. Just to give it a little bit of... Uh, Action. For you beginners out there, basically what I'm saying, just, just turn them a little bit. And I'll, I'll, I'll have, through the magic of stop motion, I'll have these inked. And then you'll see what I'm saying by the center line. So I'm trying to think of doing one more. All right, let's try this one. Make this a little small so it'll fit. Torso. He's going to be turned a whole lot, a whole lot. And that, so it's going to be down that. Now, when you turn him to the side, you have this mountain here. Your waist is not going to be and from the front. When you go from the front, I usually do the waist. I don't have one from the front. Where is it? Usually I'll have come from the front. I have the waist coming down off of that. And as I say, it comes in after that. But when you turn to the side, did you just understand what I just said? Torso, 
center line, the mountain. This is a front view. I will bring the waist down straight from this point here like that. But when you turn this guy to the side, you can't do that. So as I said, when you turn him to the side, it's shaped like this. So you can't bring it down here because that's too skinny because you have all this out. So you have to determine where your waist is going to be like that. So I'm twisting this guy again. This is a hard twist. Remember, unless you're a Chinese acrobat, it's kind of hard to do, but this is over exaggerated because I can. Wow, that is really over exaggerated. Anyway, let's see what I can do. What I was trying to do was this harder turn, a little bit of a twist, the arm, shoulders come down, the arm is right here. The other one is right here. This one can come up like this, this, or I'll say this. I, I always do those straight lines. I don't know why the arm has a bend to it. And then the shoulder. Cylinder, cylinder, cylinder oval and then you can have your line square fingers are two bends one two and a thumb circle and your two bends for your thumb remember that hand is not square square at the where the fingers are it's going to dip down center it you have this side of the palm, this side of the palm comes up to the baby finger. This is a circle. Your thumb connects with two pieces. Your fingers, one, two, unless you're doing a close up of a hand, one, two. So it's like doing an L, that's all it is. One, two, bend them a little more. And this little baby finger bends even more. You can just play around how you wanna do with your hands or how you want your fingers to be. The one finger could come in front of the other finger they don't have to be spread out. The other arm, as I say, is a given. This is always usually the in comics, you have that one arm tucked behind and it's natural when your body turn, you won't see the other arm. But a lot of times they'll have it, the elbow back here and then the fist is right here. And that's a given for comics, but we'll just bring it in and just bring it out. A little bit more so the elbow is going to stop right there <clears throat> and then your fist like that so keeping this bend let's spread his legs a little bit or a lot of bit get more little action a little more action more little action a little more action the, the more you spread them the better the action. The more you spread them, the better the action. Okay, I'm sorry for all you parents out there watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's continue. The more you spread them. Yeah. Demonetize. Yeah. The wider your legs, the more action you can stop. Yeah. So by just doing this little bit of twist, you still have this front, this part is front facing. This part is twisted so you can bring the other arm up. And then again, your chest, that curve here, your chest comes up. The other part of your chest is like this. Could you see that? Yeah, you can see that, but let me just pencil it just because. The last piece of your chest, you have this, it comes up and then into your uh, delt. This one is going to be short, so it's going to be shaped like that. Then you have part of your delt right here. Then you have your shoulder, but your neck is going to come out. And I always kill it with that neck. The neck is going to always be at this point here. So the neck is going to come up, and this is your shoulder, and it's going to come like that. And then you put your head. Now I had this guy's head tilted a little bit. So I'm going to keep it tilted because it's just kind of like cooler when it's tilted. 
Again, action, action. And then you won't see too much shoulder because this arm is blocking the shoulder. You won't see too much shoulder because it's twisted. This arm could come down. You can see some bicep here, but I'm not going to do the bicep. I'm just going to do the rib cage. This, and of course, you have that fist. And then I did this instead of just, okay, let's do it. show you what I did and not do it. I just had the thumb here and I was going to have the four fingers like that. But instead, I did this and this. I put a bend in it. It gives you a little greater detail with the, the, the fingers. So you have this square that you started out with. You just bend it down like this, curving it in. That's going to be your knuckles. One, two, three, and four. And then you have your fingers bent in like that. Your thumb comes up, curves around your first finger, and you see some palm. And you see some palm. One, two, three, four. Four, like that. Just makes for a better, better hand instead of square hands. So this, and remember, this is going to follow this line coming in. You have your. Um, this is a sticky part right here. So let me show you this because it used to get me all the time. I would see how people had would do it, and I was like, "Oh, that is tight. How do you do that?" Your abs are going, if you have good, strong abs, you're going to, the more you turn, you will see the ab jump out. And this pencil, I don't like using this pencil because there's so much glare. Let's see if you can still see it and I can block some of this shadow. You're going to see the ab instead of seeing the waist. Until you get to the third set, then you'll see some of the waist come out like that. And as I said, my, the way I'm sitting in my light is crazy, crazy glare. So, yeah, and then it comes down, as I said, then you'll see the love handle just right here. But the rest of this, you're going to see the abs in it because of the, the, the amount of twist it is in the waist. And it's going to curve right at this line, right into the delt. As I said, this is one piece. Keep this, always keep this one piece. Don't think of this as separate pieces. You can in the beginning, but it's, it is really one piece. So, yeah, with that twist. So if you're doing straight up and down characters, where's my first drawing? If you're doing straight up and down characters like this, just put a little bit of twist to it, just a little bit of twist. Start like that and then work your way out. And the rest is the same. Just remember your lines. The rest is the same. Except you have this now and you turn it. And then you can turn the head more facing the people. It just looks a little cooler. So, as I say, through the magic of uh, stop motion, I'm going to ink these two. And these are going to be my screenshots. And then it'll be over. Class will be over. So, here we go. Boom, this is what we get. Through the magic of YouTube vision, we now have stagnant positions turned into more action positions just by twisting that center line or that action line just a little bit. You don't have to do a Spider-Man thing, but just twist it in your everyday poses to give it a little bit more of a dramatic stance. That's all you have to do. So practice that and uh, see what you come up with. And of course, show me your pictures on Unfinished Comics, which you will see the description in the box below so that you can click, just click on it and it'll take you right to there. And I, uh, you know, put your, put your pictures up. Let me see, let the world see what you do. And then later on, see your improvements. And then, as I say, I'm going to start critiquing people that want to be critiqued. If you put your pictures up and just ask me to critique it, I'll do a video and I'll show you uh, how to get around some of those rough edges. So other than that, I think that's going to be a wrap on this one. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Uh, and please subscribe. Please subscribe. The more subscribers I get, the the more incentive I get, the more I can do. And if YouTube starts paying me, I'll start buying some things for like giveaways, like paper and pencils. I've done that for a few people. 
that who have been in contact with me and were saying that they couldn't afford to do what they wanted to do. And I ended up buying them pencils and paper and, and, and sent it to them. But, you know, that was out of my own pocket. But YouTube was not sponsoring or paying me. But, you know, if I see that there are artists out there that really, really, really want to try, then I'll help you as best I can for what I have right now. But that's another story. Please don't write me like, oh, I'm a poor orphan living on the street. Send me some nice pins. And, you know, no, it's just, uh, I know who you are. So other than that, yeah, again, subscribe, tell a friend. Let's get this comic book thing going so that you can go out there and make money sitting down at home at your table, drawing all day in your pajamas, making the big money for yourself. All right, that's it for this video. Class is over. Dismiss. Oh, never stop art. Never stop art. Go home.